The theme of the Crost is global, regional, regional, and local in the story of food. Last night, we started with the global story of the creation of an industrial food system after World War II that forever changed how we eat and how we relate to food. This morning, we have brought in the regional focus as we have heard the inspiring story from Chef Besh. We continue now with our panel of the regional, but now we get to the local and the story of food. So let me take a few minutes to introduce our panel, and after this, I will ask each one to respond to what they have heard as a way to share their own story. And then I will ask the audience to join us to become producers and have a larger conversation on what we do after we walk away from Crows to make this more than just a day and a half of being passive listeners and to begin to change our relationship with food. I begin the introduction at the end of the table with Thomas Beckman, who is the Senior Director of the Culinary and Resident Dining Operations of the South Central Region of Sodexo. And of course, Sodexo is our food provider here on this campus. Thomas Beckman, CEC, brings more than 25 years experience of operational and management experience in the culinary field. In his present position, he directs culinary and resident dining operations for Sodexo in the Gulf states and Midwest region with a focus on menu development, purchasing, and employee and management development. Highlights include the ACF certified executive chef status along with ACF2 bronze medals and several medals from local competitions within, which includes a best in show award. Acknowledging his work after Hurricane Katrina, which blending in with Chef Besh's story, he was presented the Chef of the Year Humanitarian Award from Sodexo. Along with work in competitions and ice sculptures, he continues to develop in all aspects of the culinary arts. Beckman has been named one of the top 25 chef food, food professionals in New Orleans by the American Culinary Federation New Orleans chapter for 2010 and 2011. Moving next down the panel, we have John Peterson. He is part of our local story as he is the owner and operator of Wholesome Harvest Food established in 1994, and it is a family farm located southeast of Seguin. The family's philosophy is that eating locally grown, recently harvested fresh food is better for all of our health. Their crops are grown for flavor, and since it is, and since it is grown using organic methods, the produce is better. The crops are grown to suit the seasons, so the consumer can be assured of the freshest produce at the right time of the year. In addition to growing other food items, they also have an herb garden. The animals on the farm roam free range and are fed as nature intended them to be fed. Wholesome Harvest Farm finds that this belief in nature and a natural sustainable way of farming has reduced the incidence of sickness and problematic diseases along, um, among the animals and plants. Of course, further down the table is Chef Besh, who we met earlier this morning and will also be a part of the panel discussion. And then at the end of the table, we have Reverend Gina Tilden-Yun, who is also the director and the mother of one of our alumni here at TOU, Luke, Luke Tilden-Yun. But she's the director of Genesis Christian Academy and the Everything Jesus Ranch. Genesis Christian Academy is a Christian K-12 through college preparatory academy located on the Everything Jesus Ranch Farm, also here in Seguin, Texas. The 114-acre rural riverfront environment allows students to explore and pursue every aspect of their spiritual, creative, intellectual, and physical development. The ranch setting provides a variety of opportunities for our youth. Not only does the farm produce over half of the food that they eat, it also provides an opportunity for practical application of their academic skills. Many of the students' science projects even involve livestock and agriculture. The very youngest students understand the principles of organic farming, farming and the responsibility of each individual to protect and improve the environment. So with our panel this morning, a distinguished panel focusing on the regional and the local, I now invite them, starting with 
Chef Beckman at the end of the table to just respond. Uh, our panelists, uh, most of them were able to hear Paul Roberts' presentation tonight. Of course, they've heard Chef Besh's presentation. I asked them to respond, to tell a little bit of their story, and then we will engage all of us in the conversation. Great. Good morning, and thank you for, uh, for allowing me to come to Texas Lutheran. I've been here a couple times, and uh, give you a little bit of background about myself. And such as John had mentioned this morning, and especially Paul last night, I grew up pretty much in that same generation about the community table, us sitting around the dinner table. And uh, I was sharing this story a couple weeks ago with some, some younger chefs about growing up in my family. I grew up in Illinois. I was originally born in uh, California and grew up in the, you know, the small out in the cornfields kind of area of Illinois, about 35,000 people, 180 miles, as my wife says, from New Orleans, four hours from basically everywhere. Everywhere you wanted to go, it was four hours away. But the family table, and it's still to this day, and it's kind of shocking, since my father has passed about 11 years ago, but it's the same that at 6 o'clock, everyone sat down to eat. My parents normally got home from work about 3.30. My dad sat at the end of the table. I sat here, sister here, mom here, other sister here. And then there was one uh, chair down at the end of the table. That was for company. If somebody stopped by while we were having dinner, of course, we set a plate down, and we sat and we talked about what had happened. And my parents worked together in the kitchen. So that was the way I was raised. And um, one of the things that Paul mentioned, and John especially, is that we kind of fell away from that during that last generation a little bit. But again, as John mentioned, with your generation, it's really starting to make a difference and a change. And, um, you know, some of it comes from again, going out into that farmer's market, or, and, and it's going back to that Food Network uh, TV piece of it. We are enjoying the, the Iron Chef pieces, but we're also learning more about cuisine, becoming more educated. And there was one question last night that was asked of Paul. Uh, there was a, um, a young student lady that had come up and asked about you know, this is really good, but I'm losing a lot of what I grew up with from my Polish descent as far as the food pieces that I don't see anymore. Hopefully Food Network is bringing some of that back into it. And then the other part of it is, I know as Sodexo as a company, in our areas that we cover, we're bringing a lot of that back in. Um, Oklahoma City University. They, they have the Asian club come in and they actually cook the lunch for the students one day so they can keep their cuisine alive. Uh, German foods. I grew up with German foods myself, Beckman. It's very German. I hold on to the two ends at the end of my name because it's a very German name. And I bring that. I did uh, five schools within the last month and a half doing nothing but German foods to spread that love of it. Um, New Orleans. God bless. I, I love this city so much. I moved there in 1987, and such as John was talking about earlier today, um, I grew up in New Orleans, and I call it growing up because I learned so much about food in New Orleans, in a hotel, the Marriott down on Canal Street, and um, it was full of locals, though, and they taught me about New Orleans cuisine, different parts of the area, you know, incredibly amazing cooking areas. My wife... You know, she's half Cajun, half Italian. Her mom was from Karen Crow. Her dad was right off the boat from Palermo, worked as a longshoreman. She has taught me about cuisine. Those are the one things that we should never forget. The other couple pieces that I was thinking about, the traditional cooking techniques and things, again, go back home, spend some time, really get into it, because we've noticed with this generation, even as a large company, that you are really starting to move the needle as to what you want, and every time you say you want something and there's a large enough movement, and we're going back to what Paul may have mentioned last night, if it's just a few people off to the side, it may not happen because it's such a large wheel to turn. But when we start hearing it from you, we're a big wheel also. So such as John has done or Paul has done with his books, if I'm buying a half billion dollars worth of food, or just in my area, last year I purchased $120 million worth of food, you tell me that you're looking for something, 
we go to these large suppliers and say, you know what? I want you to buy from that farm, that farm, that farm, and I want it to go under your umbrella, and I want you to ship it to me. And those are the things that are going to start to change. And you're starting to see that on college campuses all across the nation right now. All of the large companies are starting to do that. Just like they mentioned the Walmart piece. Somebody asked for it, you get somebody like that to move the needle, that's how it's going to change. John? All right. Hello. I'm uh, happy to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm a local farmer uh, specializing in growing vegetables for farmers markets. One of the things I believe in is doing sustainable operations. And my version of sustainable is kind of the whole food web. We raise the animals, we raise the vegetables, and so forth. We kind of complete the circle. We try not to bring in off-farm inputs. And that's one of the big problems with a lot of the farms. All of the inputs, fertilizer, seed, and so forth, come from off the farm. We are working very hard to have a complete circle at our farm. So most of the items we grow for the farmer's markets are done that way. And we grow organically, mainly for our own health. I'd like to know what's in my food and how I'm producing it. Is it the best? I think being local, whether it's conventional or not, or organic, is the best you can do. Reducing carbon footprints, as they say, and so forth. Uh, based on Paul last night, a couple of the things that he had said, and how do we change our current food system? I think the consumer needs to be educated, and they need to get involved. And as was said, if you can get Walmart to have an organic section, somebody's doing something. So learn about your food. Go to the farmer's markets and talk to the farmers. It's very important that you get educated about what's going on. Right now, I see a problem in labeling a lot. Food is not labeled per se accurately. They will try to hide things whether it's the big manufacturer or what, um, high fructose corn syrup, if you want to go that way. The Corn Growers of America just peti petitioned the Food and Drug Administration to have that labeled as corn sugar, because people know high fructose corn syrup is something they should probably stay away from, at least in large quantities. So as a consumer, look at your ingredients list and, again, ask questions get to know different things. How do we change some of them? Again, talk to the manufacturers. There's different organizations. Um, one of the best in Texas, and they're trying to help us little farmers sustain and, uh, how would I say this? Keep regulation, the overburdensome regulation from affecting the small guys. Because as John said, what can the regulators do? Everything that's we're having problems with right now is regulated. So some of the regulations come down and they're so burdensome on the small guy that they'll put us out of business. And that organization is called the Farm and Ranch Freedom Organization. It's run out of, I believe they're in Austin, Texas, if you look it up on the internet. They protect the small farmers and will ensure that we can have these good quality food and the small guys can keep supplying restaurants and grow to become part of the larger um, forces that can sustain a restaurant and so forth. I myself am not large enough to sustain a restaurant. And it's very difficult. As Tom just said, $120 million worth of food, that is a lot of food. <laughs> you know, and you have to be big to do that. The small guys can't do that, but we can feed you. If you come to the farmer's market, we can help put a piece of your meal together. The next part of it is both Paul and John had said, cook. Become cooks. Or at least be with your family, sit down over a meal. It is one of the best things you can do. And experiment with your food. We do different items. People look at what well, we have, bok choy, bok choy. How do I use it? Talk to the chefs or talk to the farmers because they all play with, you know, different menus and how to cook that stuff. Just talking to the farmers, learning how to grow it, learning how to cook it, and experiment. 